Uh, good to have you join us again today. My name is Dakbo Arua Joy. And tomorrow, uh, the, mini the screening of the ministerial nominees continues at the upper chamber, talking about the Senate. We will definitely, as we did last week, uh, link up uh, with Abuja to give a live coverage of that screening. But uh, apparently, we have 18 of these, uh, uh, can I say, minister de uh, designates now. We have 18 of them. So we're waiting for 18 again to make 36. So we'll be on this program today. We'll be uh, trying to set uh, an agenda for these ministers and then the ones coming also. So we'll try and look at the sectors, most important sectors that we should look into immediately and how soon should these ministers start working. I believe immediately that's what Nigerians want. So that's where we're going to be pitching our tent again today. So my guest today have uh, Mr. Demola Oshodi is a policy analyst. Thank you very much, Demola, Thank for you. being part of the program. Okay, let me start out. The first question today is the quality of these people so far. We have 18. Is it worth the wait? And uh, uh, yes, is it worth the wait? Well, I, you know, it, it's relative. It all depends on uh, how you, you define uh, worth. Um, the, 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 these members are people that are quite familiar with the, the president. These are members of his party. These are members that he's worked with and he, uh, he trusts. Um, so um, he basically feel co feels comfortable working, having them in his cabinet and um, pushing his agenda. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're all part of his party, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they can, they can uh, you know, work uh, with what he's, you know, with what he, he wants. So rather than bringing somebody from outside that maybe will quite be alien to his work ethic, so his, uh, his own vision to Nigeria. So it's relative. Um, he, if you ask him, he will tell you that it's worth it. And well, you know, some other non Nigerians will say, no, we expect to have more technocrats mm. rather than politicians um, in, uh, in the cabinet. Okay. Uh, do you think they, these people will justify the, the change that the APC is uh, campaigning? I think we should focus on the president and um, his own um, uh, antecedent, his history um, of discipline and hard work and uh, zero tolerance to corruption. So if the head is correct, the body will follow. So if we believe and, you know, we believe in the president and what we voted for, I believe these ministers will fall in line and do what he wants or else um, he will, you know, basically uh, make the changes he, uh, he, he would want to. So, yeah, I think we should trust the, the, the Buhari that we know in the past and the Buhari we, we, we voted for and we believe that as ministers. And I believe many of them are good. But if the ones that are not good um, show their true colors, um, the president will do what is necessary. Mm -hmm. So you believe they don't have a choice than to to live up to expectation? I believe so. And I believe so. I know Nigerians right now are quite skeptical and quite many of them disappointed. But... Uh, if we focus on the person we voted for, um, we will ensure we will be, we will see what things will happen. So um, we shouldn't get carried away with um, you know uh, history of these cabinet members and uh, what uh, they've done or may have done in the past. Uh, we should hold the person responsible, which is the president, for bringing them in. So let's have faith in the president and see how things turn out. We've had some very successful gov um, cabinet members there. There's uh, Babatunde Fashola. We've had mm. uh, we've also had some uh, you know some people when working in the international sphere. Amina mm. Mohammed, Amina Mohammed, you know, yeah. and many other people. Um, but um, it's we shouldn't get carried away even with those uh, supposedly good people. We should really uh, believe in the change mantra and uh, what uh, the president uh, has lined out for the country. We've seen things happen regarding this fight against corruption. We've seen things happen about uh, issues of power generation. We think things happen regarding security. Mm. Um, and everybody has voted him or basically pat him on the back for doing well in those areas. So why do we now lose faith when a cabinet comes in that maybe people do not expect? So things have been going so far good with this cabinet, I mean, with its choices of uh, in policy and uh, government uh, direction, especially with anti-corruption and uh, security and power generation. Mm. Why are we suddenly losing faith because uh, we, he has uh, his, his people or his friends in cabinet? 
Okay, but well, there's a need to ask this question. Won't we be seeing any much more delay? And when we talk about uh, these people hitting the ground running, because uh, some people might say, okay, the, the designation uh, per se will not come on time. And uh, you know the politics that is happening in the Senate, uh, the relationship between the executive and the, uh, the legislative arm of the government. Do you think there will be any unforeseen or foreseen delay? If there is a delay, I believe it will be deliberate. Um, it's taken this long. It's taken since May 29th to have a cabinet in place. And obviously that's deliberate for whatever reason of the president. So if we have another delay or anything that is basically showed that uh, there's not, they're not in any rush to, uh, to uh, get the, the cabinet in place, voting, I mean, sorry, swaying them in, et cetera, then I would think it's deliberate. And it's for some strategic reason. Maybe they want to ensure that uh, people are put in place close to the end of the year. So when the new cabinet comes in in 2016, sorry, new budget comes in in 2016, uh, they're all in place and everything is you know, up and running. Because, you know, by end of October, the year is basically almost over. Yeah. November is just, you know, end of year parties and, uh, you know, uh, Christmas gifts getting prepared. Yeah. And December, everybody's on holiday and yeah. it's over. Yeah. So it could be a deliberate, uh, you know, ploy to ensure that uh, nothing really happens regarding cabinet this year. Uh, Buhari controls their affairs and dictates things. And by late this year, early next year, everybody's on the ground with a new budget in place. Hmm. Well, well, we will definitely talk more when we come back from this short break uh, to introduce uh, our guests, the, all the guests that we're waiting for. Do stay with us, please. Welcome back. I've been chatting with Demola Oshodi, and now just joining us in the studio, I have Honorable Ibrahim Oshinowo. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for joining us. Good morning, once again, Mr. Dapo. Before you climb the podium, I, I was asking uh, Oshodi some, uh, for some few questions about uh, the new ministers coming in. We have 18 uh, minister designate that's confirmed, screened, and confirmed ministers. But we set an agenda generally for all the ministers coming in. We need to look at the critical sectors we should look into ASAP. That's as soon as possible. So uh, the first question I asked them was, uh, will those ministers really justify uh, the change APC really wants? Definitely. They have no choice than to believe and trust in what the party manifesto and the president's uh, ambition for the people and generality of Nigeria. If you look at the background of the nominee who has been confirmed, like our home Kemi Adeoshun, who I've worked with at least for four years. Uh, she's very vast in terms of, you know, finance and economy, you know, discussions. Mm. And it's, uh, she is internationally well respected as well. If you look at what she has done in Ogun State in terms of, you know, financial reengineering, uh, taking Ogun State from the deficit unit to at least a surplus unit, to reviving the economy to the growth of close to about 1.2 tri trillion in terms of infrastructural investment. You know, these are people that will, I think if they manage the economy, it's going to, you know, go a long way. If you look at what uh, we really need to, you know, to fine tune or to oil the economy, now we need to look at the financial sector, we need to look at works, we need to look uh, at defense. Optimally, I'm going to choose defense as one of our priorities in this country because if you don't have a good environment, if you want to talk about reengineering or oiling the economy, it's going to be dangerous. It's going to be difficult on a very, you know, a, a society that is not settled. So, the 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 well-experienced general that is coming on board should definitely work within the folds of our mandate as a party that he needs to work. We need to take first of all, if you want to go back and dwell as the first economy in West Africa, mm. we need to take serious security so serious. Okay. It needs to come on board and take things, you know, at pace. Okay, you, you mentioned works, uh, the finance and the defense uh, yes. uh, the departments that, that we should look into. Yes. We'll definitely talk about these the sectors. But uh, the, the other questions I uh, asked to him was, uh, uh, do you think there won't be any further delay in this having our ministers? Because... Uh, uh, 
you know, the Senate president has a case uh, today again. The appeal court will, 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 will determine if the CCT has the right to even continue with the case. And I think he has to be at the CCT tomorrow again. Or if he doesn't, his representatives has to be there. But do you think all these that are coming together now, all these accumulatively, will not affect uh, the, the ministers, uh, the, the confirmation of the ministers? Uh, I would like to state here categorically that we need to learn how to separate institutions from individual. The Senate president is just one out of 170 million Nigerians. The Senate is a permanent institution and it must be separated from Dr. Bukola Saraki. If when I was coming into office, I was asked to declare my asset. I did the same. When I'm closing my tenure, I filed the same as a return. Somebody somewhere can say, okay, look, in 2011, this is, this is what you've done. Within 2011, this is what the government has paid you. This is your revenue. Within shortest of time, how do you get this? How do you get that? Then I can go to court freely as a Nigerian and prove my case that before joining this thing, these are the things that I'm doing. This is the proceed of my business. So going to court or going to attend to, uh, going to a conduct of a um, tribunal or CCT, CCB or what is it called? It doesn't mean anything. If it's not there, a Kirimadu can step in and do the needful. So you think there shouldn't be any delay? That's what there you think. There shouldn't be of. any delay at all. Okay, okay. Let's let's get to look at uh, because when we went on, uh, you said that the president. Uh, uh will love to work with all these people and uh, which 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 department which sector do you think really we should be focusing on it made mention of uh, three the works department uh, the finance and the defense some people will talk about the oil and gas some will talk about the energy i mean their power uh, well we need to have power because according to the vice president he said before next year or first quarter of next year we should we should be hitting six thousand megawatts so which of the sectors should we be looking at straight and which of the people do you think will fit in okay yes quickly before i mentioned going to that um i think the president has been very pragmatic about his cabinet choice um if you notice i think it's following the the script um of uh pres former president Olusegun Obasanjo. Uh, when Abbasidja came in in 1999, his cabinet was populated with basically party chieftains, people like Chiroma and, and the rest. It was purely politi you know, full of politicians. And the second term, you are s saw more technocrats, people like Okonjewele and uh, some other individuals you know, coming into the cabinet. So I think it's, it's, it may have wanted to have technocrats, but I think the more it becoming more pragmatic, you realize that um, you know, he, he knows his people, he is familiar with them, and um, in some ways they has to, you know, incorporate them in his uh, vision, the old vision they all fought for. But regarding the, uh, the ministries or the areas we should focus on, I think the government should focus on, it. obviously it's going to be security, um, it's going to be um, um, power, and I believe also infrastructure, um, capital expenses, you know, capital expenditures, you know, works, power, you know, and security. I mean, let's basically start with, similar let's to what he just said. Let's start with security. Do yes. we really need a minister uh, to be secured in this day, uh, for, the, for Nigerians to be secured? Do we need a minister? Yeah, what is do. the army? What is the army doing? Well, we, we do. We, we, we need a minister of defense. In any government, there's always a minister of defense. So there should, there have to be a minister. They will coordinate it with not just the ministry of, not, not just with the military, but also with other agencies, you know, civil, civil, um, National Civil Defense Force, um, customs, um, even with the international, um, you know, international police, international governments. So you need that ministry. You need that ministry to be headed by a minister of defense. So absolutely imperative. Okay. Um, and sorry. Yes, because I want to go to honorable yeah. you because you did mention you start with the, 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 the defense. Really, what should be the role, the primary responsibility? Because you know the defense of maybe like uh, 1999, uh, the primary responsibility of a minister of defense then will be uh, a little bit different to now because of the peculiarity of our time. So what should be the focus of the minister of defense now? Its focus is to get the Nigerian state and the Nigerian people to receive a soul. 
is focused it to is to align our army, the Air Force, the Navy, the SSS, is to marry them together and give them the best training to combat what we are facing presently. Is focused hard of meaning that I'm going to mention is to put an end to insecurity we are facing in this country. If you look at Kenya, I was in Kenya last month, and I'm telling you some of my partners that we are discussing, they are telling us that what they are facing in Kenya is more than what we are facing in Nigeria. And I tell them, that's a lie. Talking of insurgency. Insurgency, mm. you know. And one of them was telling me that, look, the, the government of Kenya presently is voting at least about 60% of their budget to defense now. What are we doing? How much did last administration spend on security? It needs to take all the much? How much was earmarked? Because the last administration earmarked a lot of money. I think like almost one point something That's what trillion. I'm saying. Yes. That's like almost like quarter. Yes, of like the quarter of budget. the national budget. And now, that's what I'm saying. That's where I'm going. Now, it's Is it the money in. or the use of this money? It's the use. If you don't have a minister to coordinate the activities of procurement of harms, even in the conventional market or a black market, this is the president is not going to do this. He's not going to go to to China, go to Russia, or go to the United States and buy this. I've said on this fora that waiting for the United States of America to give us arms is just a waste of time. And we advise, we are that we are in the opposition, we advise Jonathan's government as at that time. I'm sure you are here. We told them do the black market go to the black market we have russia we have china we even we have israel they're going to south africa buying from south africa the last time they wanted to buy from south we africa. are not buying from south africa that's just a jamboree i can tell you that for free they are not they are just passing they are just moving the force to south african government but so silly of them they forget that institution works in south africa but what we have a decon is it decon or nikon uh an arms making company is it is it too late? Because I know they make some other they make frivolous they, things. Yeah, well, I think they, if it's anything, they do more maintenance and they do light arms, more, you know, very mm, light mm. bullets and, uh, and things like that. So it's not a very you know viable or entity right now. It's not making a big difference. We vastly import you know almost all our arms. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just continuing what he's saying. It's also training. Training is extremely important. And intelligence, you know, intelligence is key. You can buy all the arms you possible, you can train it, but you don't have people on ground, people spying for you, people, uh, you know, intelligence in the, in the air, whether drones, you know, it's not going to work. You also need the, the cooperation of, uh, you know, of, for, of, of foreign countries, neighboring countries, and uh, the, big, uh, the big powers in the world, you know. We are, we are still a very, still a developing country, regardless of how much we spend on budget. Even the 25% you talk about, it's huge compared to what, you know, even Kenya spending 60%, as you said, 25% mm. in Nigeria budget on defense is in its tie, it's more than the entire Kenyan budget. Yes, you yes. Understand? So we need a coordination of all these things, just, you know, the, in, importing uh, arms or, or improving our manufacturing. We need intelligence. We need the cooperation of international organ um, international countries, um, sorry, countries around our neighbors, and you know, France has been very, very helpful, you know, and also um, America and Israel. Though it's not been mentioned, but the questions the ministers, I mean, sorry, the questions the senators were asking these ministers designate that they you want to you tend to know which department or which ministry these people are going into and the person that they were asking much of the uh, question of defense insecurity was dambazo right yes. so do you think this person has the capability has the has the yes has the capability of taking over this ministry i don't know much about him but i know he was a military man and he had it was very high up in the hierarchy in, uh, in the nigerian army so that gives him a lot of um, you know um, Credibility, as far as I'm concerned, um, is, is competence. People in the intelligence, the people in the, in the military, will be able to probably uh, give a very, very um, clear answer about that. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously, with all the people out there, is the most. He's maybe I think even the, maybe the only military retired military person there, and with a lot of, you know, of security that. background. So okay. obviously, it's it makes sense to ask him those questions. Okay, Honorable Shana, what do you think? Do you do you know much about him? 
Hey, I know much about him. I know a little about him doing uh, President Jaradua. He's the chief of army staff, if you can recollect. He has a lot of background in intelligent gathering. He has in university, maybe a defense college in Columbus in the mm. United States. He has some background in India as well, you know, strategy and arm assemblies and all that. So if you look at his pedigree, he's a very gallant officer. And he has worked with my big brother doing his ministry as a minister of defense, Demola Seduki. Okay. He has worked with him, and I can tell you for free that Damazo is a very qualified and very, very good guy for the job. Okay. And you mentioned again, because, yeah, the second uh, uh, department you mentioned that, that needs much more focus is the finance uh, uh, department. We're, we're talking about the economy of this country. Well, it's not in a very good shape. And the last time you had someone like Okonjo Ewela, uh, which was a minister of finance and a coordinating minister of our economy. So who do you think will take over uh, these big shoes? I'm going to. I and what should the person be looking at immediately? <laughs> immediately. Yes. You know, it's to control the inflation. First of all, you know, um, the present um, the present oil price market is for eight naira, and the last budget we have is uh, based on 70, 76 naira per barrel of crude oil. You should be able to close the margin. Look at other revenue, loopholes that he, she, he or she needs to be blocked to make you know argumentation for. The lapses. Secondly, it needs to increase, you know, our, our, our international uh, relationship in terms of, you know, IMF, World Bank, you know, Bank European uh, Bank of um, 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 IMF, World Bank, mm -hmm. etc. It needs to strengthen our relationship. In he or she needs to build trust. They don't trust us. They don't believe in our dream. They will always question our demand for funds. Because, so, because, because, because of because of the previous administration, mm. what they've been able to do, telling big, big story, big, speaking big, big grammars. At the end of the day, they get the fund. Somebody somewhere will just move two hundred million dollars into his portfolio and move to South Africa. So all these things are the things that he or she needs to combat with. He needs to put a Nigerian state in a part of honor among IMF and World Banks and you know Paris and all that. He needs to he or she needs to straighten a lot of things. Come to uh, um, oil itself. I'm not going to tell you that. I don't want to even. I don't want to talk about oil again. I don't want to look at that ministry again because I can tell you that end is coming for oil. So we should focus on on some other sectors. Some we other should sectors. diversify. We should we'll, diversify. We'll, the we'll talk. We'll talk more about that. But let's quickly talk about this finance. What do you think is the is the major responsible? Okay, the major goal or the major aim of the person that's going to head this department, and who do you think is capable? Second part, I can't answer. I, I'm, I'm not too sure about <laughs> the. Uh, but the first no, part. First part, I, I believe they should. It's going to be focused on diversification of the economy. We need to move away from oil. Um, we need to as much as possible. We need to increase taxes and tax collection. We are DAPO, they need to tax you more. They need to tax me more. They need I'm, to tax I'm, I'm the, already taxed. I enough. say they need to tax more, you more. More. Yeah, yeah. They need to tax <laughs> you more. They need to tax the market woman, the informal, informal sector. You know, you know, forget just taxing the bankers and the insurance people and the people in the old sector. Well, it's not, it's not the taxing already because no. I, I, I would love to know what yeah. the tax I've been paying. What has it been used for? Well, let me tell you right now, the tax I've been paying has not been well collected. It has not been steady. And many times your corporation, you know, I don't know if you, they hold back the tax money, you know. And many times the tax assessment is quite inaccurate. So all these things need to be put in place. We have uh, Mr. Tunde Fowler in uh, Abuja now, like mm. uh, did a great job in Lagos. Hopefully he can, he can push this agenda for the, for, the, for the country in general. So taxes needs to be increased. They need to also, uh, the new minister needs to also ensure that we, we have ways of opening up the banking sector for small, medium scale enterprises to collect loans. You know, let them have loans, let create this small cottage industries, small businesses. Small businesses are the, basically the backbone of any economy. They create more jobs than any other place. You know, we have a, you're hiring two or three people, four people, and it's magnified over millions of people around the country. There's so much, they create so much employment. You mm -hmm. know, push things like the Nollywood and push things like, um, you know, uh, foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. Let people come and invest in the auto industry. Let people come and invest in agriculture. You know, 
moving away from um, the subsistence to com commercial. How soon should yeah. all this be? Uh, how soon well, I think I, should we say uh, the gains of all I this I think it's in? quite. It's going to be quite immediate. You know, when the person hits the ground, when it's when the person's sworn in, uh, the person is going to be waiting. He's going to be getting his team in in in, in order. His economic advisor team is going to be getting his own uh, special advisors and uh, assistants, and he's going to have put things in place. It'll take him probably to the end of this year to do that. The new budget comes in late this year, yes, early next year. Yes. Work starts. Work you know, starts. I believe so. Okay. So, yeah. You don't want to talk about the oil and gas, but we just have to talk about it because right. we have someone like uh, because definitely Be Kachuku uh, will be heading or thereabout be heading that department supposedly. Uh, 